if you think I'm being racist, your brain is so fucking rotted out right now that uh, I'm surprised you were able even to turn on your computer this morning. You fucking idiot. Challenge for Ethan from H3 and fans who thought he said nothing wrong in his Will Smith Oscar slap podcast. Watch this entire video without pausing. You're only allowed to comment once you've made it through the entire thing. Okay, so in case you missed it, Will Smith just decked Chris Rock at the Oscars. And besides the general chaos of it, here's why it's important that he did that. Quick recap, Chris Rock made a joke about Jada Pinkett Smith being bald, calling her G.I. Jane, and Will Smith got up and, you know, decked him as he should. Because if you didn't know, Jada Pinkett Smith has alopecia. She's been extremely open about it. She's made lots of interviews about it. There's no way that Chris Rock did not know she had alopecia, which means that he was making a joke about a black woman's hair in front of a predominantly white audience for no reason. The same man who did a documentary about black women's hair is making a joke about a black woman's hair. And while we all thought that we were just gonna stop making fun of people and their medical conditions after what we did to Chadwick, apparently we will not. So Will Smith got up and did what he needed to do. Say what you want about their relationship, but Will sending up for Jada is important, not just for her, but for all of us. You are a black man who is tired of being labeled as the weakest link because of what you perceive to be the actions of other black men, then you should be taking notes from Will Smith right now. Not to say that Will and Jada have a perfect marriage or that Will Smith is even the blueprint for what a black man should be like going forward. No, but Will Smith watched Chris Rock, another black man, one of his peers, use the pain of a black woman as a punchline. And when he realized that Jada wasn't laughing, he didn't tell her that she needed to lighten up or that she was overreacting. He got up and made sure that Chris Rock would not be telling any more jokes about her hair. And that is what it means for black men to hold each other accountable in regards to how they treat black women. Listening to black women about the things that bring them harm and responding to those things when we see them. And obviously there's more to it than that, but like baby steps, you know? Anyways, I think that Chris Rock owes Jada Pinkett Smith an apology. And hopefully we'll see more people sticking up for black women, both in and outside of their immediate vicinity. I'm glad that somebody put this into words because this is what I feel like a lot of white people are failing to understand when they attempt to offer their woefully uninformed perspectives on this issue. Many white people see violence as a form of aggression that is purely physical. Many black people do not. And what a lot of white people are failing to realize is that their worldview and that their cultural understanding of these concepts are not universal. When we, as black people, say that we see Will Smith's reaction to Chris Rock's comment as justified, it's not because we don't see Will Smith's actions as violent. It's because we see Chris Rock's actions as being violent first. So what you, as white people, interpret as assault, we, as black people, interpret as a black person defending a black person from another black person. And honestly, you don't have to understand our definition of violence. You don't have to agree. But what you do have to realize is that this is an interaction between black people, making it a black issue, meaning that your white perspectives are not needed. Many white people see violence as a form of aggression that is purely physical. Yep, and that's because of their systemic advantage, aka privilege. Please go watch the original video. Chinielu chose to see the situation as a race issue, and they're correct. But I would like to expand on the point. The incomplete understanding of what violence is is not exclusive to whiteness. It also applies to all forms of hegemony. When you exist in a society that has been entirely built around your safety and protection, your culture and your institutions shield you from ever experiencing non-physical violence. Society is built to ensure that people of the predominant class, race, gender and identity in general never have to suffer from non-physical violence on a systemic level. That's why people in position of power and systemic advantage have built their value system around the notion that violence is only physical. Because if they get hit by a car, no amount of institutional power can keep them from feeling that pain. So that's the only one they recognize. That's the only form of violence they still fear. The only one that can negatively impact the way they navigate society. The person who's never been told by a teacher at age five that they deserve to burn in hell because of who they are does not understand the devastation that non-physical violence can cause. That strict and totally arbitrary separation between physical violence and non-physical violence serves the privileged, the institutionally protected. It's in their interest to not understand non-physical violence. So if you've ever uttered the words, violence is not the answer, meaning physical violence, you're showing your privilege. All right, I was going to go to bed. Clearly, I have my retainers in, but I can't go to bed without getting out my thoughts about Chris Rock and Will Smith. And I want to get this my thoughts out before all the white writers start with their two cents, because... Yes, as much as it is about assault and masculinity, it is very much so about the Black experience, especially in white spaces. So Chris Rock, who was a Black man, 
attacked a black woman for her looks. And it's very apparent because right before he makes a joke about Javier and Penelope Cruz, whom I love, by the way, love that. But he's making fun of Penelope's success. He, I don't remember the joke, but he was like, if Penelope wins, Javier's not gonna have a good night. And if he wins, blah, blah, blah. But it was about her success, her work. Now, Chris Brock, a black man, comes for Jada, who's not nominated, unlike Penelope and Javier. She's a plus one. And he talks about her look, most notably about her hair. Her hair, which is a very sensitive subject for black women, which Chris should know since he did that movie, but also because she's been very vulnerable and open about it, which has been very refreshing for all women, but especially black women. So I can understand why Will was so upset because this joke was very different than the other jokes that he get that he has been getting on the King Richard tour. Those jokes have been about the entanglement that we've been hearing forever, blah, blah, blah. I see those comments now. However, this joke is different because here is a cis hetero black man in a predominantly white space degrading and belittling a black woman for the purpose of entertainment. A woman who's not nominated, a woman who's a guest technically, and a woman who is a professional, like these are her peers. Why make that joke? I mean, Regina Hall made a joke earlier, but it was targeted towards Will. She said, well, you're married, but I want to take you. Like it was focused on Will because Will was, he's the one who should be attacked, a comedically attacked. So while I do not condone violence, blah, 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 I can understand that from the Black perspective. And that's why it's important that we discuss this. Because Black women, even at this degree of an award show, of an internationally televised event, is still the butt of the joke at the expense of a Black man to get some laughs when he could have gotten those laughs another way. You can tell Will is at his breaking point, like emotionally, physically, when it comes to his wife and other things. However, while we check on Will, we also need to check on men like Chris Rock on and why they feel so comfortable doing that, joke or not. I think this Will Smith punching Chris Rock thing is really revealing how people feel about Black women or if they think about Black women at all, frankly. Looking at the footage before Will Smith gets on stage, like, look at Jada's reaction. Obviously, I don't know Jada personally, but, like, she looks hurt. You're making fun of, like, an autoimmune disorder, alopecia that she has. So Will just saw a loved one get humiliated on a global stage, and you're saying you can't understand why he might want to throw hands? So if you're clutching your pearls and talking about civility... In my opinion, you're a bit too comfortable ignoring Black women's pain. But y'all are not mad that Will Smith was violent. Let me clarify. Black people, y'all are not mad that Will Smith was violent. Y'all are mad he was violent in front of them white people. And white people, y'all are not mad that Will Smith was violent. Y'all are mad that it made you uncomfortable. And the only thing y'all can do when y'all are discomforted is offer up an unintelligent critique. So younger and girls were making fun of my hair and I begged my mother to let me relax it she literally sat me down in front of the tv and made me watch this he gets it he understands he understands why that joke is fucking terrible like he really really understands and that's why it's so much worse because he complete he completely understands the shtick with black women and hair and the insecurity he made the whole fucking film in white spaces, we are expected to be perfect. Growing up in a white space, whenever I raise my voice, mm, stereotype. Whenever I got mad, mm, stereotype. Whenever people made comments on my complexion or the way I looked or called me a slur, mm, I couldn't react or I was being too violent. I was being too angry. Y'all see the fucking hypocrisy? Y'all aren't even trying to understand our point of view. No, it's insensitive. I get it. She's not fucking dying, dude. She's not dying of cancer. Lots of disabled people have pointed out the alarming rhetoric that has immediately circled this conversation. For so many people, it became not just about determining whether or not Will was, you know, justified or understandable in hitting Chris. Like, I truly don't want to hear any more opinions on that. But, like, how quickly the conversation shifted into attacking Jada or dismissing her issues. Oh, who cares? Al Peach is not a real disability. She's not really sick. She's she's just bald. Who cares? Like the weird dismissive commentary on Jada and her disability and her illness, like 
Um, yikes. Because if that's how y'all talk about, like, this, you know, wealthy, famous, beautiful celebrity, like, it's very clear you don't have compassion for people even when they're honest about the issues that they struggle with. And that's alarming. Especially because, like, nobody wants to talk about how alopecia can make you immunocompromised. Like, that is a very real issue, especially now with COVID. Like, weird how quick y'all were to dismiss that. Now let's hear from Ethan's own fans. And yes, I chose to highlight the comments of his black fans because amplifying their voices is important. I don't think it's hard to understand people being on Will's side. You shouldn't smack a person, but it's not that hard to wrap your head around wanting to smack someone or not feeling bad when someone gets smacked. The first caller was right. People get smacked, so when you treat someone badly, that's always a possibility. That's just reality. This was a disappointing episode. Black woman listener here. There was a lot of diminishing of black experience, voice, and disabilities. Also, the outrage and ease for Ethan to label will aggressive, violent, and unhinged based on one slap. Are people not allowed to lose their cool or mess up once to your knowledge? This is why race is always a factor. Ethan is the worst with these callers, you gotta let them speak. I'm a black fan and I've been listening to that for a long time, and it was so hard listening to all these calls. Ethan was so focused on a slap in a vacuum that he was ignoring the hindsight. It all just felt icky. Obviously the slap wasn't right at all. He was wrong for that. What got me was him not being able to understand the gravity of a black man making fun of a black woman for being bald and having alopecia on top of it. Not to mention that black women have been the butt of society for so long. The culture with a black woman and her hair is deep and it breaks black women to shave their heads or go bald. I don't think Ethan should have commented on the race aspect at all. Chris Rock 100% knew what he was doing commenting on his hair as he made a documentary about women, black women at that, and their hair. As a black woman this was a little bit hard to sit through seeing as how Ethan doesn't necessarily know the backstory, and when the one caller tried to give him backstory he kinda wasn't hearing her. Out. I don't know. Just didn't sit right with me. When Olivia was hired I saw a positive change in Ethan. Having the views of a woman are valuable in a room full of white men. That being said, a room full of white people speaking on issues that have never affected them is uncomfortable to listen to at the very least. Maybe Ethan needs a constant reminder that black people go through issues who can't fully comprehend the same way he did with women. Ethan, don't ask people for their empirical evidence as a gotcha moment on a topic where obviously there can be none. There's no empirical evidence on different communities' reactions to something that barely happened 24 hours ago. Your opinion is anecdotally based just like hers was. Also you are not debating. You don't even know the rules of debate and having watched most of your episodes, you don't know how to. Speaking to your fans in such a contemptuous way was so disappointing. Refusing to listen and going into a hissy because you were called out as being insensitive was so disappointing. For everyone who was unfamiliar with why some black people identified with this line that Will was protecting Yada, there are so many black comedians and talk shows on YouTube covering this in a much more entertaining, less dark, contemptuous way, where you can expose yourself to the variety of opinions. Alexander Rogers, DG1, Chronicle Speaks, Cheryl's World, and Rodney Davoice, just to name a few. You will probably laugh way more than you did watching this train wreck of a conversation, and learn more about different cultural perspectives as well. What's anti-black about what I'm saying, you fucking freak? Ethan, most people are calling you out for your choice to ignore the racial component of this altercation. If you have this many people calling it out in your chat, maybe you should take a moment to reflect since you're speaking over a community that you aren't a part of. Final thoughts. Ethan is first and foremost a comedian. That is why I believe he is so fired up over this. He believes that this slap is setting a precedent that it is okay to attack a comedian for their jokes, and because he has made similar joke comments about people's appearances, he will eventually find his way into being attacked one day too. The difference here is that Ethan has never punched down of black women or other marginalized groups to my knowledge and in such a tasteless way. He's projecting himself into a situation that doesn't involve him. Comedians have one of the most difficult jobs in entertainment, trying to balance truth, humor, and taboo all at once. But in case it isn't clear, being a comedian isn't a free pass to be an asshole. I am Asian American. I see hate crimes against people who look like me every day. It is still happening to this day in 2022. People attack our men, our women, our elders, and I am the last one to advocate for any sense of violence. But then we hear quote unquote comedians say stuff like this. Give it up for the one and only Tony Hinchcliffe. Hello, good evening. Welcome. Hello. How about one more time for the filthy little fucking chink that was just up here? <laughs> All you fucking race traders are whooping and hollering. I'm back there watching you puking in a fucking bucket. <laughs> oh, we make it a gunpowder. Oh, you want extra soy sauce. Oh, you borrow money from us. And you guys just eating it up, you fucking pussy. We hear that and think, damn if someone laid him out like a sack of potatoes. That wouldn't be the saddest thing in the world, would it? 